I feel like I've wanted to do something like this my whole life. <laughs> this, this freaking fat, dumb little kid having these dreams about being someone like this is just wild. But, you know, everyone can change. Everyone can change, and so can I. And just wanting this since I was a kid. I just knew I could do it. So, I might not be the brightest might not be the strongest right now, but it doesn't mean that I can't become something more. <laughs> My name is Zane Alexander Victor, and I'm just a regular kid. I have a normal, unusual routine. Get ready for the day, brush my teeth, comb my hair, and then I go to school. And you know, I'm a pretty average student when I want to be. <laughs> and I do pretty all right. You know, I'm even fortunate enough to have a big social group of people who have the same dreams and aspirations as me to become an actor, a talent I have quickly gained onto and loved. And like every normal kid, I'm also a bit of a gamer. I have a little bit of fun clicking the clacks and snacking the sacks. Also, I'm one of those kids who records his games and puts them online. <laughs> I mean, so far it's worked out for me love you guys and also I tried to be a wannabe Instagrammer so in every single way I am a normal guy but always one thing always confused me something that I felt was different from others and this thing this thing that feels so different so unnatural for me it's called boxing. Shot he is. He doesn't want to run. He fires back. He may be. There's a shot he is. He doesn't want to run. A fanny to go. This is really high level stuff. A lot of fanny to go stuff. This sport about punching people in the face for fun captivated me. It brought me in. It made me excited. And you know, everyone usually likes the sport in some type of way. You know, with movies like Rocky or Southpaw or some of obscure ones like for me, Real Steel. But I always liked it more. I always wanted to compete in it. I had this weird competitive vibe, and I don't know why. And that became even more so when this new part of boxing came about. This new part of the sport. Influencer boxing? These stars that I knew and respected for a long time, getting into the ring and actually throwing down. They worked hard for this, but they never did it before. They actually did this. It was wild. And they were entertaining events. They were actually entertaining. They actually got good at this sport. And this inspired me so much so that I even started to compete with my friends, playing bodies on the playground and actually throwing down, having a fun time, 
doing something new. So eighth grade, <laughs> we, we just like had this whole thing, you know, with like the whole playing bodies at recess, remember? Like we just played bodies outside because the whole KSI versus Logan Paul 2 was coming up. And I like instigated that, remember? Yeah, I remember that. It was uh, pretty, pretty fun, man. Yeah, it was goofy. The thing was, you always won. You always won every single fight because I didn't put enough output because I was uh, scared. I only fought once, remember? Yeah, yeah. I I did, I did get that one shot on you, that one shot that almost dropped you, right? If I remember you talking about it a few days ago. Yeah. Yeah, that one you almost kind of spun my team. I'm not gonna lie to you. It was like top of the year, yeah, almost no, like no. kind of behind in front of the ear. Well, still, I mean, that was pretty crazy. You always, you always did so much output. I uh, don't know. You're a bit of a, you're a bit of a brawler, man. I mean, I was just mainly doing body shots because I didn't want to knock the fuck down. Uh, I mean, who knows? Maybe I might have a chin. I don't know. I don't know. So it was even more clear, I did want to do this. I did want to compete in boxing, not only be a spectator. But, it always just ended there. Just a little bit of competitive fun. I never really got so massive into actual fighting for a few years. So, what changed? What in 2022 influenced me to start what drove me the want to become a boxer and the answer is i do not know i don't know the answer i don't know my love for boxing just kept increasing and increasing and increasing ever since ksi versus logan ball 2. i searched up more about the depths of boxing the big stars the unknown stars. I watched normal boxing bouts. I watched popular boxing bouts. I watched big fights. I watched little fights. It grew. And my love for boxing just grew. And now, more than ever, I just, I just want to do it. But finally, one day, me and my mind said, enough is enough, and th the words, I am going to do this. And finally, I begun fully investing into this idea. Christmas, I got the first two things to start my journey, a heavy bag and boxing gloves. And I instantly posted about my journey and about what I'm trying to do here and what I want in the future. And I still stand by that. 2024, someone is catching these hands. And I practiced. It wasn't much, but I practiced. And then, you know, I took a month or so break due to my show and everything, but what happens when I put full dedication into this? Getting back into training, I wanted to focus on my strengths. So first I went in with my dad to get some more pad footage. And I started to realize a lot of right and wrong in what I was doing. And mainly the one wrong, and is the one that's gonna take a long time, is me gassing out. Me not having the best gas tank to focus. But also my defense. My defense needed work. You know, as good as it was, it wasn't going to cut it in a real fight. And my dad is short, so he's not on my level yet. But I still kept an okay distance and retaliated back. I also wanted to focus on new shots like my uppercut. A shot that I haven't really practiced much on my bag and something that is pretty crucial for knockouts and also damage. 
and also just a good shot overall to have in my arsenal. I needed to start training that cardio, so I went for a run in the first time in a while, and I noticed quite a few things. One, I can run fast. Two, I'm running wrong. My feet are wrong, and this is terrible. But to have it, I would soon break and become better with. I wanted to take this seriously. I needed to take this seriously. So the next week, I pumped it up to the next level. I pushed myself beyond and brought myself to a level where I wanted to improve. I needed to do everything I could to improve. So I did. Uh, it's, uh, it's very early. Um, five, six in the morning. Um, around this time, I'll be getting ready for school, but I'm gonna go for a uh, run because you know it's spring break. <laughs> I've never done this before, so yeah, this is gonna be interesting. As a kid, I used to do these early morning walks with my dad all the time, but. As I've aged, I've very much grown out of it and mostly done my own thing without doing stuff like that. But now, because I wanted to get serious about this, I had to go back on these walks. Maybe I took it a little too seriously. I made like a whole protein shake and everything for this to get prepared for this run, to get prepared for this day. Because I wanted to work out this whole day. I wanted to put the pedal to the metal and work out. And it got even funnier when my dad walked in and just watched me as I was making this uh, freaking protein shake. Uh... so early oh man just lights darkness all around Now was time for this big run, this big like walk of mine. And in the middle of breaks, I always did a little bit of a shadow box. Just moved around my feet, threw some jabs, couple hooks, uppercuts, just uh, working on everything that I need, head movement, everything. checked out this little basketball area over here. You know, it is quite nice. Yeah. Even though that was important to realize more about myself during this experience and realize how beautiful the world is, I had to focus on what I was really here for, this workout working on my skills, working on my cardio, working on my shadow boxing. Everything I need, I needed to do here. I needed to do and work on, on this run. But there are highs with every low. I forgot my key and I couldn't find it. But the workout didn't end. I kept going and I went to the bag. I went to the bag and I worked hard. You know, this wasn't my best. I wasn't at my best. I was still gassed from that run, but I kept going and that's what matters. I kept working out. I went from bag to bike to leg raises. I worked hard on this and I put effort in. I put my best effort in. And that is what truly matters. I actually worked hard for this. No though, 
there is one thing that I never truly did though. There's one thing that I didn't do yet that was crucial that I did this day and was important. And it's the start of full commitment. What I did was drop 114 bucks on equipment. I bought new punching gloves, 18 ounces. I bought a headgear set. I bought mouth guards. I bought a freaking hand wrap. I did everything I needed to do. And it was finally time for me to spar. See, that was always the piece of the puzzle that was missing here. I was always scared of all of these punches. When Michael fought me, I always lost because I was scared of taking damage. So, I'd have to learn in the long run how I can be susceptible to that. If I can be susceptible to that, I needed to learn if I can actually fight back. So, that's what I did. Before I show you this very fast, I can't stress enough, um, do not try this at home without protective equipment. Thank you. Now was time for my first ever spar, and it was against no easy man. My dad took Tong Soo Do for years and eventually earned a brown belt in his youth, and those skills never vanished. He was still very good. And he had some advantages on me, even though of his dish advantages. Anyway, to explain, this is a very fair spar, because my dad is only 15 to 17 pounds less than me. And, um, that's, uh, basically it, other than height and that tiny bit of weight, it's a fair fight. And he definitely whooped my ass in this one. So, just watch... Just see as I learn new things and hear my commentary about it. most important and crucial thing is using disadvantages as advantages. My dad really likes that body shot as much as I do. I love body shots, but my dad loves it because he is the short one of these fighters. And he quickly picked me apart as I was trying to always go for that face shot, but he kept blocking me. All of a sudden, something flicked on inside me, and I started to come up with this new strategy of not having a strategy. Big swing and a miss. But if that shot landed, that could have been lights out. And I really am glad it did. But after this, I kept getting that one shot, because I kept changing it up. But the thing is, I got cocky. I got cocky in all of this, and I started shit-talking my dad, and then he had enough once I hit him with the body shot. All right, after that little bit of silly was done, I went back to the strategy and it was still working out pretty well. But slowly, my dad started to pick it apart still and now started kind of slipping shots. And he was doing pretty well with all of this. This is the first punch where I said, oh, fuck me, because it hurt pretty bad. It took yeah, the fine. wind right out of me. And also, like I will later show in a clip, it really felt weird to drink water. 
Anyway, that was very close to the solar plex, a very crucial shot for getting knocked out. And anyway, uh, my dad is wearing the smaller gloves because, you know, I'm the bigger guy. And it hurt like a motherfucker. So at least I know I can still stand up even after that. I can take a punch. Nice. And can punch back. But once more, that cardio was having a lot of issue and I was tiring out a lot. It wasn't long after this until I, I took the first break. But something else is, I got frustrated with how much I was tiring out and I was also missing the shots. I got really frustrated that <laughs> in a second here, you're gonna see I pulled an Astrid wet. There it is. Rightfully deserved, you dumb fucking doofus. Good. That solar plex one was really good. Oh, that feels weird when you swallow water. Yeah. My dad started to turn it up here. He started to engage it a lot more and pressure me more. And I started to get hit a lot more than I did before. It seemed like I was defeated, like I couldn't do anything more after that liver shot, like I had nothing left, but then, and only then, finally. Okay. It was like top of the year, like kind of behind front of the year, right? I take no pride in this. I take no pride in almost dropping my dad, wobbling him. But it just shows I do have something. Anyways, he got me back eventually, and this eventually ended the spar. He hit me really hard in the solar plex, and I got so gassed out I could not continue. But sparring does not have wins or losses, but if you really want to, chalk it up as a TKO win for my dad. Even though he could have dropped me at any point he wanted, and I probably could have done more damage if I was trying. You can call this the lightest spar you have ever seen. Because it probably is. <sighs> and the experience is just everything here. It's just everything. And in the long run, it's gonna turn me into a goddamn monster. The grind never stopped. It never ended. And I just kept going and going and going, improving more and more on the stuff that was needed. Over and over, I put my all into it and became a beast of a man.
And just think, just think, I have so much to learn still. And when I get into an actual boxing gym, it's gonna be a problem. It's gonna be a massive problem for anyone out there who wants to compete with me. So right now, I may just be in the manifesting of my boxing career, but 2024, a supernova is coming, and it's not going to stop, because from manifesting, I will be becoming. I don't really know who I am anymore, I let the bike take over, smack my head on the floor, even though I got permission, I still use a back door, cause I never fully listen. Yeah, I see you in passing, never even stop, no, you never said a damn day. I know you're sick of all this badgering, you ever was considered, and I'm wishing for the best thing. 